This is gonna be really cool. Drop it. Looked like you had superpowers for a second. Normally you do this at the beginning of a journey, but we forgot. We were spearheading the search early on for a filmmaker, and John kind of emerged out of nowhere. So you're just rattling one after another after another, so keep it really flat. Okay. To me, the big secret ingredient is John Watts. He's such an amazing director. He is taking his Spider-Man to places we haven't we haven't seen before. He's just really good at letting you have your own voice and, and bringing your own version of the character to the screen. One take wonder. One I mean, take. We that's did all it I five need. Five times in that take, but, but that I only need one. One take wonder. Oh. <laughs> what John Watts brought to the table from the very first second was he wanted the kids to be real kids. I wanted to play a little bit straighter, like flatter, like yeah, exactly. He has a youth and enthusiasm as a filmmaker that matches the youth and enthusiasm that Peter Parker has for being a superhero. Oh man, I'm never gonna stop doing this. <laughs> the next movie I had wanted to do was a coming of age high school movie. And then when Jeremy Latchman and Eric Carroll were pitching what Marvel's take would be on Spider-Man and saying that this is a high school movie, I was so ready to talk about high school movies and what that would mean in the context of a superhero movie. Great, do one more. He just got it immediately. He made the analogy that for me, I was always waiting for the bell to ring so I could go home and ride my dirt bike. That's what Spider-Man's doing. He's waiting for the bell to ring so that he can get out there and do his webhead thing. If you're really putting yourself in the shoes of a 16-year-old kid, you would love being Spider-Man. And it would be very stressful, but the fun of it, I think, initially would outweigh the complications. Whoa. Woo! Everybody good? Spider-Man is a young student, and he's really just on the cusp of becoming a hero and becoming a man. And I really, really remember what it was like to be... 15, 16, 17 in high school, and you're not an adult yet, so you're thinking about things in a very, very skewed, specific way. Said, congratulations, MJ. And then you said, <laughs> That's funny. John is just so positive and optimistic. His energy is just infectious on set. Great, keep rolling. John wants it to be real. He wants it to be honest. He wants it to be an accurate representation of New York and teenagers and young people. And he's doing a great job. <laughs> great. I love that John takes an actor's perspective. He really takes suggestions. Creating something like this is a collaborative effort, and it's a lot simpler when the actors and the director have like a clear path. I just want to thank you for letting me be part of your journey. It was nice to be in a similar situation as him, you know, where we both hadn't really done this before. Yeah, that was really good. I mean, I was a Marvel movie. It's like I get to be Spider-Man. It's the coolest thing ever. Yo. He kept it very easy going on set. Um, it, it was very real, it was very organic and visceral at the same time. He's a fantastic director to work with because he will let you do your thing. He would just be like, well, what would you say in this situation? And then this time, just uh, forget all the lines and just talk a little bit about uh, whether or not you're gonna get paid and if you've gotten paid yet. Okay, cool. Action. Have you guys gotten paid yet? Direct deposit. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and we got. John has a real respect for the fans who care about this character and all of these characters so much. This is not an origin story. That was the first decision we made when we started thinking about what kind of movie we wanted to make. While we have all the spectacle of Spider-Man, you also want to focus on the drama and the conflict. John, he had a brilliant idea for making it about the black market cast off of all the superhero technology he realized that there's a very good business out there. We're seeing the ground level of what life is like in a world where the Shatari aliens have come through and almost destroyed half of New York. What are the repercussions of that? What John really wanted to focus on was that my character of this hardworking family man, and he had come from his working class roots. The world's changed. It's time we change too. This take on Spider-Man is more of the story of how Peter Parker deals with, with what he's going through. I just, I just want him to be like you. And I wanted you to be better. In a movie of this scale, it's just remembering what it's really about. You're trying to tell a human story about real people, 
and making sure that you never lose sight of that in the midst of all the spectacle and chaos and the extremely complicated logistics of production and effects. Ooh, that was sick. Yeah. yeah. Is just remember that at the end of the day, it's a story for people. Somebody's got to look out for the little guy, right?